I got into composing because about five minutes away from where my step-grandmother lives in um, New Hampshire, there is a place called the Walden School, which is a course for, like a summer course for young composers. It's actually really unique in that there aren't that many places for people to start when they're 11 years old. They have professional musicians come and play your music, so it's a really amazing thing for young composers or young people who might think they want to be composers. Okay, and what was the first thing you wrote? The first thing I wrote that I actually wrote down and then was performed yeah. was there when I was 11, and it was a viola duet. So, um, how did you become a conductor? I suppose in some ways it's a bit like being a composer in that, you know, if you want to play the violin or the flute, you can go and buy or borrow or rent a violin or a flute and practice and then you make the sounds. Yeah. But if you want to be a composer or a conductor, it's all very well writing or waving your hands around, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, so I played the violin as a kid, I was in lots of youth orchestras, and I was in the London School Symphony Orchestra, and I remember thinking, that looks way more fun, waving your hands at the front and singing at the back of the seconds going like this. Actually, I was, I was first desk of the seconds, but anyway. <laughs> um, and so I had, some, I had some lessons with the guy who ran the youth orchestra, but at some point you need something to conduct. So I got some friends from school and youth orchestra together. And we did a concert, and it was terrible, and I was terrible, but, you know, then we did a bit more and a bit more, and I suppose that's my first got my kind of practical experience conducting. And I studied a bit at uh, St. Petersburg and Royal Academy of Music, and I'm a ELCO associate conductor. You two can do it, kids. When you get a new school that, yeah. you know, it might have had one performance here, there's like maybe one recording, or sure. even if it hasn't had a recording before, yeah. what is your first thing that you do with the school? You know, look it through. I, it's, that's a terrible answer. Um, you just read through it and try, you can get a, you know, from a, a good school, you can get a feel for what the piece is like just from, you know, a read through. That's, that's the first thing you do. And then you sit down and, we played a bit at the piano. I'm not a very good pianist, but you can still kind of work out how, how it sounds. You can kind of hear it in your head, and then you learn it. Are there? Are you one of the co sort of conductors who uses lots of pencils and colours and writes all over the score? No, I don't really use any colours. Although, no. when I've gone back to pieces that I've said I've done before, um, you know, I'm doing again maybe a year or so later. I remember noticing about a year or so ago, I didn't write anything in my parts. And then at some point I thought, oh my god, I write too much. And then it kind of changes over time how much you write into things and how much you don't. I suppose you prefer when you have maybe like a blank slate and somebody says just write a piece. I suppose you know it'll say an mm. orchestra of this kind of length. Or do you prefer when you have specific people in mind or specific soloists or specific collaborators? I, I love a variety because if you, I feel like with each project, if you're coming at it and you think, oh, it's another one where I'm doing a really similar thing to the last sure. one, sometimes it can become like you want something fresh to be thinking about. So yeah. it can be really exciting to, you know, one project is really for that specific soloist okay. and you're really thinking about their sound, um, but also trying to make it universal as well. Yeah. Um, and then the next one is a lot more blank slate and you have more freedom to play around. Um, and also, I mean, like the sort of question of collaborating, of course, it's really important for composers to work, find musicians that they like working with, find conductors that they like working with, find... Um, but also, I really like um, the variety of often working with more unusual types of artists um, and drawing inspiration from that as well. Do you think that there's, I suppose not an obsession, but people concentrate too heavily on commissioning things rather than you know, doing things for a second time, because there's no point commissioning something that's never done again. And obviously Changeling yeah. is, is for the second time. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's so great to have Changeling done, you know, less than a year after the premiere. Sure. It's happening in other, again in another country. And that can be quite unusual. Um, certain pieces are easier to programme more often. Um, and quite often you sometimes might even think about that when taking on a commission. Sure. Um, but... Yeah, there can be a really big uh, emphasis on commissioning, and I understand that from the commissioner's point of view. I mean, I also run a concert series where we commission new work, so I'm if if that's the thing that you should be guilty of, it's, I'm guilty of that too. Have many um, of those been done again? Yeah, we actually try and organise second performances okay. for them and try and get 
the performers and that's also chamber music so sure. if the performers like a piece they might take it on and play it more often yeah.